Hi there, welcome back to Real Agenda Radio with me, Tom Burgess. It's certainly been a while, but we're ready for our new series. Now, here on Real Agenda Radio, you'll find podcasts that seek to resolve the inequality and the unnecessary hardship in the world, because that is the Real Agenda. Now, today, we'll be talking about setting an example, standing up for what you believe in and showing leadership. Don't be afraid, be bold and authentic. This way we can bring change. Now this episode is part of our From Here to Prosperity series where we address the issues that I highlight in my book where I proposed an agenda for progressive prosperity. Now the book is published by Shepherd Warwin and is available from all good traditional and online bookstores as well as from... Here, from www.fromheretoprosperity.org Now, before we get into today's topic, let me tell you about a new series coming soon on Real Agenda Radio. It's called The Real Agenda, and I'm really delighted that this new series will be co-hosted by Jennifer Nadel, who is a former barrister, an ITN Home Affairs editor, and also worked for the BBC and Channel 4. She's an author and also has been a parliamentary candidate, and she's the co-founder of the highly active campaigning group called Compassion in Politics. And we've also asked our good friend Gavin Esler, the broadcaster, author, and the informed, prolific tweeter, to offer his comments Now, in each episode of this new series of The Real Agenda, we learn how we can prevent so many families living in poverty, how we can help the squeezed middle struggling to make ends meet in this cost of living crisis. And we ask, why do the wealthy just get richer? And what can they do to help society? Now, we know whys, or we know all the whys, and we know how to fix it. So why don't we just do it? Because that is the real agenda. Now we'll be also plan to have a special guest in each episode who is an expert on the key issues we'll be talking about and how to resolve them. But on with today's show in the uh, From Here to Prosperity series. Now, unusually, I watched a documentary about Taylor Swift the other day. It was called Miss Americana. And the thing I learned was it was about her determination to succeed. And indeed, she did start very young. And by anybody's standards, she has succeeded. And most of all, what impressed me was her decision that she could no longer stay silent about a Senate candidate standing for election in her home state of Tennessee, who had voted in the past against equality for women. She realised the dangers of such a public figure entering the political fray, but she felt she had to act, which she did. However, despite this, the senator still won. But it was very impressive that she just really decided that she just had to, she could no longer stay silent. And, you know, I think it did, it, it did cause some damage to her. Now, if any more people in public life stood up for what they believed in and what they thought was right, their influence could help us all and it might make a greater impression on our voting behaviour. So there was Carol Vorderman, the TV presenter, or former TV presenter, I understand, who has 858,000 followers. And uh, Carol used to be a neighbour of mine in the village of Cookham many, many years ago. But she says, what have we become? a parliament with a petri dish of policies to aid the super-rich to the detriment of all else. She says the majority of the super-rich not only want more, they also want you to have less. The two are different things, but they have come together in a perfect storm right now to confuse and divide us even more. So those opposing immigration, who aren't super-rich, she says, argue that we need to look after our own first. But without questioning, 
who? And she has it, has it here suggests that this is the cruel and corrupt Tory government. So without questioning who is the real cause of the increase in and heartbreaking of problems of homelessness, homelessness, poverty and NHS crisis and the money worries for most in the UK. She says the right-wing media supports this and so the voice becomes an echo chamber. Do they ever criticise the government? And she asks if you could send... If you would send examples, if you can find out why. She asks also that, you know, don't fall for their lies. She says the wealth of the super rich has risen 22% since the pandemic. The number of billionaires in the UK reached record levels during the crisis. Please stand up and be counted in this coming year. The next election is crucial. It's a critical turning point for our children and their children. Please make sure you're registered to vote. Absolutely, Carol. Thank you very much. A reminder there, get registered to vote because that's the way you can help bring change. And uh, all the best to Carol, who I do recall serving a mulled wine once at our village firework night. Now, the other day I bought a lovely sound system from Richer Sounds in Cheltenham, where the staff are most helpful. Now, this is the first time I've been a customer of Richer Sounds, though I have met the founder, Julian Richer, on a few occasions. I also interviewed him for an early edition of our Profit for Purpose series here on Real Agenda Radio. And I've always been impressed that he handed over the majority stake in the company he founded to the staff. He has also gone on to fund some determined campaigning groups doing good work groups like Tax Watch and the Fairness Foundation, who we featured on this podcast series before. We spoke to the director, Will Snell, recently. And there's also the Good Business Charter, where we also spoke to the CEO, Jenny Herrera, in an earlier edition of our Profit for Purpose series. And Julian, as they say, has put his money where his mouth is, and he's prepared to stand up and show an example to others thing is we need more like this well indeed there are more there's also a group called the patriotic millionaires who are wealthy people who want their wealth to be taxed more they realize that it's not just them that's created the wealth and they believe it should be not just accumulated by a few they want more tax on wealth and polls show that the majority agree they conducted a survey and a poll back in March 23, which was organised by Servation, and it showed that 68% of those with over a million pounds to invest support the introduction of a net wealth tax on those with more than 10 million. And the Patriotic Millionaires UK polled those with investable assets of a million or more on their attitudes towards the economy, extreme wealth and tax policy. This actually represents 6% of the UK population. Now, the poll had some very interesting results. It showed that 72% support increasing taxes on wealth to help fund public services and the cost of living crisis. 68% support an annual wealth tax of 1% to 2% on people with more than $10 million in assets. I work this out that this would actually bring in $250 billion per year. That's a quarter of the government budget, causing actually no hardship to anyone. 66% of those polled who had $10 million or more in assets and would be subject to the annual wealth tax supported the introduction of the tax. Over half the respondents believe that extreme wealth concentration is undermining social mobility in our country. And 66% felt that the introduction of wealth taxes would help to increase opportunities for social mobility. And so it goes on, because over half of the polls respondents think the economy would be stronger if we tax those with extremes amount of wealth. So the country could invest it in better public services and national infrastructure. Now, this poll followed a previous YouGov poll that showed 
more or less the same thing, overwhelming public support for the introduction of a wealth tax on those with over 10 million. This poll showed that ultra-wealthy agree with ordinary Brits in supporting an annual tax on wealth. A lot of work that also has been done by Tax Justice UK, who have actually produced papers on how this, or documents on how this would actually work. Now here we've seen the patriotic millionaires have been showing leadership. But where are the politicians? What a, what a vote-winning policy this could be. Local, lower taxes for lower incomes and more revenue for public services with a tax that causes no hardship. So at least it seems like a very compassionate and popular and would be a very popular approach. Ah. But who provides most of the funds for the main political parties? The wealthy and super wealthy. Hmm. Maybe there's some connection there. Another problem we have to tackle. There have been some some hope because there are others showing leadership and there's an increasing number of MPs that have given their support to bring more compassion into public life. The group Compassion in Politics, which is a cross-party organisation working to put compassion, inclusion and cooperation at the heart of politics, has been working hard on this. It has won the support of over 100 MPs and Lords, set up an all-part of parliamentary group for compassionate politics, and written and submitted bills working on a Compassion Act and an Ethics Commission. The team has achieved considerable media coverage, highlighting incidents of bullying, lying and general bad behaviour, as well as contributing to ideas and plans to improve the conduct of our elected representatives and their advisers, with the aim of achieving more compassionate outcomes for the people of the United Kingdom, especially the most vulnerable. You can find out more at compassioninpolitics.com. So how can we make, help make change happen? Well, a key theme in my book was that we should tax income less and wealth more. What we earn is a direct result of our own hard work, while the wealth created by us all through the work we do, but it's only accumulated by a few. So if we change that dynamic, there is enough funds to ensure a well-funded education, health and social care programme, as well as the fact that those on lower incomes will have more disposable income because of less taxes, which they will spend helping grow the economy and the wealthy will have no cause to change their privileged lifestyle. So it's a win-win situation, isn't it? Sounds good. Why don't we do it? Well, we still. Why do we still keep taking taxes off in, on income from people who are struggling to pay for the basic necessities, and as a result, have even less? It's complete madness. It just causes even more problems for those concerned and the country as a whole. We like need to stop this vicious circle going round. Now, in my book. From here to prosperity, I showed that you could take 80% of people out of paying any income tax by having a tax on assets of the super wealthy. You see, because there's no such thing as a self-made man or woman, as we all rely on state-funded education, health services, roads, rail, defence, law and order and support services, it's all paid out of public purse and it helps businesses thrive and indeed people thrive too. So our mindset needs to change as those with wealth have some of the wealth that we helped create. So it's only fair that those with wealth give some of it back. Which indeed is what the patriotic millionaires are proposing. If you'd like to find out more about the patriotic millionaires um, or indeed get involved directly, it's patrioticmillionaires.uk. So what do you think? You can contact us on info at Real Agenda Radio or Twitter at Real Agenda, Ra- Real Agenda Net and via our website, realagendaradio.org because we'd love to hear your views. And if you'd like a copy of my book, From Here to Prosperity, A New Political Agenda for Sus- a Sustainable Economy and Greater Social Justice, go to fromheretoprosperity.org. 
You can also follow me, Tom Burgess, on Instagram. That's Tom Burgess 2709 where I post information related to Real Agenda Radio and the campaigning work I'm involved with. But I must admit I've been very slack on that recently, but hopefully we'll catch up again soon. So yes, more information on realagendaradio.org. You can listen and subscribe to Real Agenda Radio on Amazon, Apple Podcasts, Google and Spotify, and more where you will find a range of podcasts for positive change. Now, one thing is certain, people want to see change to a more compassionate and just society, as well as more courageous politicians prepared to do the right thing for people over party. It's not happening, but it's urgent, and it's up to us to make it happen. That's The Real Agenda. I'm Tom Burgess. Thank you for listening, and I look forward to talking to you again soon.